Hello everyone. In this video, uh, I'm gonna write a Python code that uses optical flow method for two sequential image. And optical flow method actually captures the motion between these two images. So let's start. Uh, first thing, I'm gonna import module CV2 and also NumPy as NP. Also, I'm going to import Google. Collab patches import. So this one should be from import CV2 in show just to show the result. And because two images are located in my Google Drive, I'm going to from Google collab import drive. So these two uh, these two images are this is the first image and this one is the second image. So you see here there is a motion between these two images and also these dust and smoke are also part of this motion as well. Okay, so let's uh, specify the directory of these two images. First thing to do is I have to mount the, uh, my Google Drive. Then the directory can be specified. So here, directory of these two images are in, in this folder. Uh, then let's run it and see. Okay, it asked to connect to Google Drive. You, you say yes, then allow to be connected. And there we go. The next step is to read these two images. I call first image uh, CV2 imread. Then this is directory plus uh, frame. 28.png. So here, this is frame 28.png. And also do the same for the second image. Second image, that's 56. And the next step is to convert these two image to the gray scale, because you know when you emulate these two images, these are three levels, RGB. But when you convert to gray scale, that's gonna be just one level. It's gonna be computationally more efficient for optical filament. So we can say first, we can first run these two lines. Then going here first, gray cv2 cv cv color and inside cv color you can specify first image then here you can specify cv2 color cv2 color BGR to gray, color BGR to gray. So I copy paste here, doing the same for the second image. 
EGR to Gary and let's run it, no problem here. Then the next step is to compute the optical flow. So I specify variable flow as output of optical flow. Then CV2 calc, this one calc optical flow uh, form back. So this is optical flow that uses the algorithm of the uh, farm back. And here you can see the inputs for the farm backs algorithm. The first parameter as an input is the first input image. So the first input image is first gray. Then the next is the second input image. So it is a straightforward. Then the third parameter is flow. Flow is something that if you have already computed flow, you can use it here. But if you don't have, you can say none. Then this parameter is parameter scale, uh, excuse me, parameter scale, which we can specify as 0 0.5 because parameter scale is classical parameter where each next layer is twice smaller than the previous one. So also levels, how, how many levels that these parameter layers are, uh, so you can specify number of layers as three. Then wind size. Wind size is actually the averaging window size. So it can affect the smoothness and robustness of the output. Uh, to more information, please read the documentation. But here I specify 15. Uh, then the next parameter is iteration. So iteration, I specified three iterations. And Boolean is kind of a pixel uh, neighborhood used to find polynomial expansion for each pixel. Here, if you read the documentation, it has some recommendation like typical Boolean is five or seven. So here I use five. Then the next one is poly sigma, which again, it has some recommendation, 1.5 for poly N5 and 1.1 uh, for poly N5 and 1.5 for poly N7. So we can say poly sigma here is, I would say 1.1.2. So the last one is flags, which I'm not gonna use it here. So flag is zero. So that's it. You can compute flow and there we go. There's no error here. So right now we have output flow. So I'm gonna use it for plotting. For plot, for plotting the optical flow, the issue here is it's gonna give you a very dense flow. So you don't want to see all details. Maybe you just want to see some bigger features, bigger uh, moment. So there we need to do some pre-processing. The first thing is spacing, which I specify as 20. I'm gonna tell you what a spacing means. So a spacing means kind of space between each arrow in grid. So a space between each arrow in the grid or in the image. Uh, then when you specify the 
spacing, we can go to the shape of the flow. So let's say flow.shape. It's going to give you the height, height, and number of levels, which we don't use it here. So what, what is important here is H and W. So H and W are important here. I have to use underline. Yep. Then the next step is to compute the number of NX, number of pixels that we wanted, because when we specify a spacing, then uh, it's gonna reduce the number of pixel in X direction and Y direction. So NX would be W per spacing. But because it should be integer, make sure that you define integer. So the same process for the NY here should be H. Then once you're done, you can compute the X vector that you wanted. I'm gonna use line space from zero to W. And the number that we want is in X. Also, here the type is integer 64. One important thing that not uh, to be forgotten is it should be W minus one because it starts from zero. And we can do the same for Y vector. Here it should be H and it should be NY. So as I said, the flow is very dense. So I define here flow not dense, which would be flow NP I X Y and X. So it's gonna uh, it's gonna actually reduce the resolution of the flow based on these definition of X and Y. As I said, X and Y are two new vectors, which I defined uh, because the original X and Y are two dense and I wanted to reduce the resolution. So then what we can do here is we can define the U vector. U is a vector uh, motion in X direction. So this is gonna be this flow. Just the first, just the first level. And also the V is another movement. U and V are two uh, parts of movement in Y, in X and Y axis. Uh, so we can extract these two from the flow not dense matrix. And then we can compute the magnitude of the UMB, which is NumPy SQRT uh, U power of two, V power of two. This is the magnitude. And why magnitude is important because Let's define this one as the UV magnitude because I want to actually not to show a small magnitude. So I would say if UV magnitude is less than three, then it's going to be non-value. The same for V. So here we are ready to plot the output. Let's run it to see if there's no issue here, awesome. 
So the final step is to plot. First, I import. Matrix plot as a PLT. Then I define figure axis PLT subplots. I would define just one, one, one by one panel, and the fixed size is ten by ten. Uh, then what I can do here is I can define this keyword. Just keep in mind this line, this is a keyword which specifies the angles as a X, Y and a scale units as a X, Y. So I can plot, I can use quiver function to plot the arrows. So the first input for the quiver is X, the second y, then u and v. Also, I can set this keyword here. And also the s scale can be specified as one, but you can change the s scale. Then you can set the y axis to be reversed because you know the image, this is the image, this is the image, but the computation is as an X, Y. So X, Y, the Y axis is the reverse of the image. Then you can also specify the aspect of the figure as a equal. So if we run here, then you see that, let's go back to this image. So remember that there is a motion, the car is moving this one, this direction, and also these smoke uh, are actually expanding to the space. So the result, you see that it shows expansion of the smoke and dust and also uh, the car here. Maybe it's good to show it's the second, second gray image. Maybe just second image, not gray one. Okay, there we go. So you see here that the expansion of the smoke uh, is captured very well by optical flow method, and also the direction is very well captured. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it.